What a joy it is to be present with you and have opportunity to worship you uh, with you here. If we do have any visitors, welcome. Glad to have you along here with us. Uh, if it is that uh, uh, you'd like to follow up, uh, information can be found probably on the internet or on your worship folder, and you can contact the church from there. Uh, members of the congregation, we're also glad that you're here. What a wonderful blessing it is to gather together and be blessed by Almighty God and to be able to worship Him heart, body, soul, and mind. And so it is that we have much to rejoice for. In our prayers today, we especially are going to uh, uh, lift up a prayer as uh, we've extended the call and your congregation has extended the call to a pastor, uh, John Schultz, associate pastor at St. John's Plymouth. I had the privilege to be able to read his letter. Uh, what a joy that that is. And so we're going to ask that he, uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, able to take and to discern as to where it is that Almighty God uh, would so direct him. And so I think we're ready to go forward with our worship service. And uh, uh, so if you want to go to page number three, is this the song? It is, which one of the songs that we have to use the song book for? Uh, Amazing Love is okay. the one we have to use the song book for because it was printed incorrectly. Okay, so now when, where do we have that one? This one's good. Well, that one's near the end of the service. We can't jump that far ahead yet. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and speak, O oh Lord, as the opening song. We're going to let the uh, group lead us in regards to that. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Now, as we gather to hear God's word and to call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first acknowledge our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. 
Therefore, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Now, Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone the bread was rejected. Has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. This is marvelous. Lord, I thank you that you have answered me. That you have become my salvation. Save now, I pray you, O Lord. O Lord, I pray you, you are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will praise you. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd without whom nothing is secure. Rescue and preserve us that we may not be lost forever, but follow you, rejoicing in the way that leads to eternal life. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I myself will search for my sheep, and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples, and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture? that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture, and to drink of clear water, that you must muddy the rest of the water with your feet? And must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet, and drink what you have muddied with your feet? Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder, and thrust at all the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock, they shall no longer be a prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 1 Timothy chapter 1. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service, though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love 
that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience and as, as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of Ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And together we'll speak the Alleluia and verse. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him, uh, namely Jesus. And the Pharisees said, the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if the lost one of them does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner that repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep it in the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and now this is where you're going to need the song books, okay? For the song Amazing Love. What page number is that? Uh, number 102. 102.
God's grace, his mercy, and his peace are yours in Christ Jesus, dear friends. Our text is that epistle lesson, a portion of it that we'll be talking about just a little bit. You know, I was kind of imagining to myself coming out here and not knowing exactly how close the water, you know, might be. And I kind of was reminded a little bit about how it is that, uh, 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 how it is that when our Lord uh, at times did teaching, and I was kind of looking around for the yacht that I would be standing upon and put out and have the opportunity to talk with you. But then again, I'd have to demonstrate my faith in being able to take and walk on water probably to get to that yacht. And I only walk on water uh, once a year, and that is when we, it is that we have our winter fest out on the lake, and that's because the ice is frozen many inches thick and really works out well. Well, anyhow, I bring greetings to you, to brothers and sisters in Christ, and peace of the church in Nina, Wisconsin. They thank you. And the reason why they do is because they got a shorter sermon so that I could take and be able to get out here. Now, the bad news is, is that I'm adding those minutes to your sermon. <laughs> so the fact is, is that what a day to be able to enjoy and be able to come together. They do bring God's peace to you and his greetings as representing the whole of the circuit. They alongside with you, and I'm so thankful for the brothers in the circuit that we have your pulpit covered. Uh, through the month of October and that they'll continue to come forward and be able to assist as we can go forward until the Lord brings that under shepherd that he has already chosen to be able to serve you folks here at Trinity. You know, I, I, I really like the letter to, the Timothy, to Timothy. We call it one of the pastorals and it has a lot of good news within it. There's a lot of instruction. There's a lot to be said. Bottom line is Timothy, who was uh, sometimes referred to as the first bishop of Ephesus. He's a young pastor. He has spent much time in training uh, under the tutelage of St. Paul, some 12 years that they were together. And Timothy is now in Ephesus, one of the congregations that were founded by St. Paul. The gospel that Paul there had proclaimed was well received and the Holy Spirit brought many to believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior. And it just so happened to be that things were going well. And if you read through the letter to the Ephesians, you'll discover that, that things were going fairly well. However, there were some false teachers that began to come and to bring harassment to the congregation and bring confusion concerning some of the primary teachings of the Christian church, wanting to be able to once again captivate the believers of God by the law so far as the fact that the gospel would be diminished even if it was the least bit important. And so it is that Paul writes his letter to Timothy, encouraging him to continue to stand firm in the faith and to be able to continue to deliver the truths. The truth that is uh, uh, the truth that Timothy did continue to proclaim, and I don't know if you're aware of it, but St. Timothy, this young pastor in his latter years would actually follow in the footsteps of his mentor, St. Paul, and that he would suffer imprisonment and would he himself be martyred. And so it is that he gave his all for the sake of the proclamation of the gospel. You know, if there's any good news that we need to be able to hear is the good news that Paul writes about here to Timothy. And the beautiful word is this, Christ Jesus came to save sinners. That's beautiful news, isn't it? You know, when I think about all of the stuff that is going around in our world, there isn't usually a week now that's going by that we don't hear about shootings and so on and so forth. And the fact is, is everybody throws up their hands and they're all in, you know, uh, in, in disarray or whatever the case might be. And I honestly believe, dear friends, if it is that we could continue to proclaim this truth, that Christ died for sinners, maybe perhaps peace would come into our world and that peace would come through the forgiveness of sins, that peace would come uh, uh, insofar as the fact that it would reestablish hope, hope concerning the life to come. I honestly believe the more that the church does this, the greater peace that can come to our nation. And what a blessing that that would be, huh? Wouldn't it be great to be able to see far less shootings going on in our communities, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. But Paul, he uses himself as an example, and you heard that in the text. He demonstrates what this means insofar as the fact that Christ died for sinners, to save sinners. 
of which Paul claims himself to be what? The chief of sinners. Y'all yeah, like that hymn, don't you? You know, from the hymnal. It was one of those I had to memorize when I was in grade school, growing up in a parish school. Chief of sinners, though you be. Isn't that how that hymn went? Something to that end? Okay. You know, it's kind of like that T-shirt that, you know, points and says, I'm a stupid. Wouldn't that be that if this one's a sinner, you know, and then have the arrow kind of go that way? Yeah, it's not the way it is, right? fact is, is that we are all sinners. We're all, how is it that one preacher once put it in the past on our dirty, rotten, scoundrel, hell-bound sinners? That's what we be. And yet Paul gives good news, doesn't he? And the good news that he gives is that Jesus came to save sinners. And what a blessing that that is. Paul talks about the fact that you know, Christ had chosen him to be worthy to take and to proclaim the gospel. Yet Paul, though it sounds prideful, Paul knows full well there was nothing good about him. Paul realizes the fact that he was an enemy of the Christ. He calls himself to be an insolent uh, opponent. He calls himself to be a blasphemer. That indeed he stood against and mocked the name of God. And we know from the book of Acts that indeed that's exactly how he was when he was formerly known as uh, Saul. Okay? Some people make use of the acronym AKA, also known as. Okay? I like to make use of the acronym FKA, insofar as the fact for, for Paul, formerly known as Saul, okay, in regards to that. You gotta be careful of your acronyms because every now and then they spell stuff that you really don't want to use. Okay? Bottom line is this. Formerly at that, he took great joy in going and arresting. He found great uh, great reward in bringing Christians back to Jerusalem to be tried, to be imprisoned, and perhaps even be put to death. Why, he even held the clothes of those who had stoned to death the first martyr of the Christian faith, his name being Stephen. Paul knew what he was. And Paul also come to understand what Christ had made him to be, a proclaimer of the gospel, one who would go forth and speak about Jesus as Lord and Savior, talk about the forgiveness of sins, talk about the salvation for which it is that Christ had come to bring forward. Bottom line, dear friends, is that he knew the grace of God. And it is this grace of God that he wanted to have shared and that he encouraged Timothy to go forth and to proclaim. He knew it so well as to who had done what, that indeed he gives all honor and praise and glory to Almighty God who had worked this good work in for the sake of him. You see, dear friends, we have a message to take on, don't we? Out of Trinity Lutheran Church, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, you have a message to take and to proclaim. Not only for the sake of encouraging one another as brothers and sisters in Christ, but especially for the community that God has placed you in. Especially to be able to reach out. And God has done that, right? You may recall last Sunday when we were at the call meeting and asked if there were any charter members. Okay? Nobody stood up. Can't imagine. But the bottom line is this, dear friends, you're all ambassadors for Christ. And the Lord has provided for you so many wonderful preachers throughout your history. And God has taken and been with you in the times of plenty as well as in the times of not so plenty. And he still has good plan for you. He still wants you to be proclaiming the gospel. And he is going to bring you an under-shepherd to do just that. An under-shepherd like St. Paul, who at one time, uh, and still is, because we're all sinners until it is that we depart from this earth, but he's going to bring one to proclaim the grace that is founded and grounded in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what a blessing that that is. Paul would say concerning his ministry that he would like to have nothing be known other than this. Christ Jesus and him, what's the last word? Crucified, right? Him who was crucified. And of course we know that he was also resurrected, ascended, and is going to come again in all his glory to be able to take us home so that we might live with him for the sake of eternity. Dear friends in Christ, God not only gives you the means of pastors to do proclaiming, 
He, now, he also gives you his word and his sacrament. And the word and the sacrament are called the means of grace. It is that which God uses to bring us into relationship with him, to keep us in relationship with him, and that when we close our eyes in death, than to be able to go and celebrate an eternal relationship with him, all because of what it is that Jesus had done. All because he came to save sinners. And he did that through his blood for you and for me. Dear friends in Christ, continue to persevere. Continue to celebrate the goodness that God has brought to you through the means of grace, that you are one of his saved sinners and empowered to be able to go forth and to serve as an ambassador of Christ Jesus, to be able to gear up and be able to proclaim him who has come. We have good news to share. And that good news, once again, that Jesus came to save sinners. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may that peace of God that surpasses all understanding, may it guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. There's no space that is love can reach. There's no place where we can find peace. There's no end to amazing grace. Take me with your arms spread wide. Jesus and for all people as is according to their needs. Throughout the entire Old Testament era and especially through your prophet we have heard Almighty God how it is that you 
you were going to take charge and that you were going to once again gather your flock that was scattered on account of false teaching. You were going to gather them and raise up new shepherds. In fact, you yourself would become the shepherd. We pray, dear Lord, that you continue to shepherd your people. Continue to gather us around you through your holy word and through your sacrament. Let it be that you might continue to uh, uh, cause the church to grow as the spirit soul uh, intends and bring growth, dear Lord, to your people internally as well as externally. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Indeed, dear Jesus, you came to this world for a purpose. The purpose was to come and to save sinners. You offered yourself upon the cross, and there reconciled us to the Heavenly Father. Your open grave has declared that indeed there is victory, that the forgiveness of sins is sure, and that indeed as you have been raised from the dead, so also we will be raised from the dead. Let it be, dear Jesus, that we might be able to continue to proclaim you as Lord and Savior, as the hope of the nations. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O Holy Spirit, it is you that continues to take and move into our hearts. You cause us, dear Lord, not only to believe, but also then to continue to be enlightened and to go forth in service of you. We pray, dear Lord, that indeed, that we would be mindful of those who might have departed from the flock, that we might go forth and continue to encourage them to return, and that by your grace and mercy, dear Lord, when being restored, there be great celebration. Lord, in your mercy. We ask, dear Lord, as you have commanded through your servant, St. Paul, that when it is that we gather together to always lift up those of whom have been raised up to govern over us. We pray, dear Lord, that no matter what elected or appointed position, no matter what level of government, federal, state, or local, that by your grace, dear Lord, men and women who have been entrusted with the care of this nation, with this state, with this community, that they would seek to do what is right and according to your will, that they be blessed, dear Lord, on account of their faithfulness and the people of whom they serve just as well. Continue, dear Lord, to bless our nation with the freedoms. Continue, dear Lord, to be with those who stand the wall for the sake of our freedom, for those, dear Lord, who are celebrating, or I should, I should say, are serving in the armed forces. Lord, in your mercy. You are both healer of body and soul, dear Jesus, and so especially we lift up to you those who seek your face for the sake of physical, spiritual, emotional healing. Let it be that by your grace you would smile upon them. We take a moment, dear Lord, to name such individuals in our hearts. Hear our prayers in general, hear the personal prayers, hear the prayers of those who cry out to you, and let your will be that they be established once again in good health. Lord, in your mercy, we remember, dear Lord, those who are celebrating various uh, uh, celebrations in this earthly life, perhaps a birthday, perhaps a birth, perhaps, dear Lord, uh, uh, a wedding anniversary, all kinds of different purposes and reasons for celebrating. Thank you, dear Lord, for those times of celebration, to lift up our hearts and, and to let us be able to enjoy, dear Lord, such good things. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Lord, we ask that indeed you continue to grant us patience here at Trinity as we anticipate you bringing forth the under shepherd to serve here in this place. We ask, dear Lord, that you be with Pastor John Schultz as he now uh, uh, deliberates the call that has been extended to him by this parish. Be, dear Lord, uh, uh, we are mindful, dear Lord, of, of our brothers and sisters at St. John's in Plymouth. And so let it be that you bless both congregations, dear Lord, insofar as the fact that you know what is best for all. We pray this to uh, Lord in your mercy. Yeah. One last petition, Lord, and that is this. Thank you for all those who have gone before us, the faithful, dear Lord, who have fought the good fight in faith. St. Paul and Timothy, and perhaps others, dear Lord, members of the congregation that we're aware of, our own family members that we're aware of, friends, dear Lord. 
Thank you for their example as heroes of faith. And let it be, dear Lord, that we, along with them, uh, might be able to join you before your throne, there to be able to celebrate the feast of the, uh, the wedding feast of the Lamb for the sake of eternity. Lord, in your mercy. It is into your hands, dear Lord, we command all for whom we pray. Trust your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor. May he grant you his peace. Amen. Let's see now. Turn the page. Why don't you all go ahead and be seated. Um, announcements. Chantel Jones, do you have anything that you want to say? I guess there's something I should say. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chantel. Does anybody else have an announcement? Thanks, Pastor. Last one. Wait, as right. you said earlier, we did hear from Pastor Schultz, and he is deliberating our call. Next Sunday after church, if everyone could come downstairs, we'll reconvene and end our meeting. That's a good plan, right? Absolutely. And then if anybody would like to paint rocks, next Saturday we have our monthly crafty event where we're going to paint kindness rocks for the school. Super. That's all I can think of. Okay, very good. Brother John, any announcements over there? Sunday school starts next Sunday. Okay. So, um, Very good. Uh, so. And that'll be on a Sunday, right? On Sunday. Yeah, okay. On okay, Sunday yeah, after church. Sure. You know, yeah, that sounds good. Anybody else have an announcement to make? What yeah. about lunch? Why don't we deal with that? Well, I got an announcement for this week. On Wednesday at the, at the uh, school, the, we were having our progressive dinner. So the kids are each, each classroom is preparing like an appetizer, and then we'll have a main uh, dinner in the cafeteria and gymnasium we're going to have uh, some grilled sweet corn probably some pulled pork and uh, so you aren't all invited and um, it starts at 5 30 i believe 5 30 so please come on over and uh, enjoy some some food and also uh, take a look at the classrooms and visit some parents that are at our school so it'd be great to have you thank you oh yeah well it's, you are correct we're having a packing party actually as well for uh, food, the local food pantry, or food pantry, and we are doing a packing party. So we'll be packing up a bunch of boxes, um, ready to go home boxes of food as well. And if you do come, the entry fee is some canned goods or some boxed goods. That would be awesome if you could do that. Very good. Is there any instructions for potluck? We will. <laughs> but I also know Lutherans very well. As long as they know there's food, it's kind of like a charge, you know. Okay, very good. Brother Joe, take us home.
that you have provided. You have given us for the sake of being able to enjoy even here on this earth this travail of tears. We give you thanks for the fellowship that you have made with us through uh, the suffering and death of Jesus. The fellowship that we're able to have with each other as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Let it be, dear Lord, that you continue to bless our activity today. May you be glorified in all things. We invite you formally to our table praying. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guests, and let your gifts to us be blessed. Amen. There we go. Now, did I, did I get everything handled? Yes, okay, all right, good. All right. Y'all have yourself a great day, all right? Yeah, I got off for a little bit. Um, I'm in the box there.